lot of feet there. <laughs> Fifty two centimeters of EP on the bevy shad sixty FC. Big fish. just spot locking um, on areas, casting, you know, five, 10 minutes in each area, then move on to the next. So we'll just hopefully this wind can stay down a little bit, but yeah, she's blowing pretty hard at the moment. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, let's get stuck into them. about to pull up to the first snag, throw our first cast in. So this is a new snag, I haven't fished this one before. I haven't been here quite some time to be honest. So it's a, be all new to me again, starting again basically. Hopefully we can catch a few. All right, let's get into it. fish. Lucky craft. One's micro. But yeah, they're pretty aggressive. And he's just hit that on the pause. I don't know, maybe 36, something like that. Just a nice little one. Head down. Come on, buddy. Not a bad fish, though. He's a, he's a, he's a bad fish. Just can't get his head up. Holy. Get your head up, mate. There we go. Well. These lures can catch him anyway. Look how he's been hooked. I don't know if he's come up and he must have had to have swiped at it. 
that's him there. He's a, he's a bit better, that one. They're all fat. Real nice fish, but I'm just, yeah. Come up the river here. And I just can't, like any of these big snags, I don't know if you can see that over there, but just cruising up the river and um, casting hard bodies into these big snags and um, getting it right up there, right up hard into the, uh, up the back of the snags and um, just ripping these hard bodies out and just like jerking them and twitching them. And uh, yeah, the good thing about these things is that they're a deep diver, but they, if they hit timber, they just sort of, I sort of just stop, let them float back up above it. And that's when they're getting hit. And look at that one. This is that fish just from before. Right there. And the Lucky Craft Bevy Shad 60. It's not the way that you normally want to catch them in the back there. But somehow it managed to stick. And straighten a few of these trebles too. Lovely fish. 30, I don't know, maybe 38 or something like that. Pushing 40. But yeah, beautiful fish. That's that lure that I've been using. Have you had 60 FC? Gets down nice and deep. It's uh, gonna need a hook change. He's straightened all three of those back trebles, probably because it was pinned in the back. Anyway, we'll get back into it, change trebles, and get back into it. So I've just had a quick treble change. Uh, that fish had she straightened a few of the trebles. So, but just before I start casting again, I just thought I'd quickly show you one of my favourite things on the boat. Um, obviously, my electric motor. Um, but the onboard charger kit that I've got, it's a 12 to 24 volt uh, DC to DC uh, charger. So it pumps charge back into the lithium battery that runs the Minn Kota. Um, and I can basically fish, I, could, I can be up here for two or three days. And um, a lot of the time I can end up having more charge at the end of the day than what I did at the start of the day, and that's been on this all on being on the electric all day. So it just charges off the main off the main motor. So currently I'm sitting on 93%. I don't know if you can see that, but 93% charge in the in the lithium battery. Uh, let's see what it's at at the end of the day. Once I fish up river, burn around on the main motor, and uh, and be on the electric most of the day. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens. Here we go, another nice little perch. A few about at the moment. Another nice little perch. Lucky craft. Matter of finding them. Been picking up a few here and there. And um, yeah, I'm just basically just snag hopping, just from snag to snag, and then for hopefully find a couple of big ones. Um, yeah, just searching with the hard body, it's a good way to search for them. And um, yeah, they're climbing all over it today. Baby Shad 60 FC. This is the deep, so it gets down nice and deep. I'm sitting in about three meters of water here and just getting it, this gets down to about probably two meters. So sort of near the bottom, but it's just at that right level where if the fish are sitting on the bottom, they don't have to travel far to hit it. And um, yeah, perfect bait for them today. Get a few more. Not that big, he's just angry. Not that big. But he hit it hard and he's angry. 
Here we go. I hit that on the paws and crunched it. That's that fish there. Again, another nice fish. Probably about 38, 39 thereabouts. Crunch that lucky craft head first. Almost ripped a rod out of my hands, that one. I thought it was going to be a lot bigger. He put up a good fight, so. I don't know what that sun's doing, if that's in your eyes, guys. Sorry. I'll fix it up. It's that fish there. Good little EP on the lucky craft, just fishing these deep snags. It'll be about, I don't know, 40 centimetres or so. 38, 40 centimetres, not too sure, but look at that. That mouth there is just made for eating. And uh, there's really no lure too big when it comes to these guys. These guys will eat 130, 140 mil swim bait, you know. That'll go there in that hatch pretty easily. We'll get him back and we'll get another fish. Never get sick of these. So this is all, these are a bunch of fish, bunch of perch sitting under some snags. So that's why these hard bodies at the moment, you can see that there's heaps of fish and they're sitting deep in that timber, deep in the snag. So you can see, which I'll show you the snag behind me, that throwing a plastic or something into there is pretty hard. You'll just snag up, even if you're weedless, you'll still end up snagging up a lot of the time. Whereas a hard body like I'm using today, like the Lucky Craft, Devi Shad 60, um, the FC, the deep diving version, I can crank it down, because that lure gets down about two meters, which is about there on the sander. So I can crank it down to about that two meter line where those fish are sitting, and just twitch it and pause it, keep it suspended in that area. And if I feel a little bit of a bump or a snag, I can just pause it, the lure will float up. And I'll be just able to work that lure, just full wheel drive it, so to speak, out of these snags and just bump it along the timber. And as it's floating up, I can like crank it a little back down again, let it float back up, and that's when the fish will just come out and smash it. So, and then that, that way the lure's in that strike zone the whole time, rather than just, you know, if you're using a shallower dive and lure, you know, it's not gonna get down deep to where those fish are, which I showed you on the sander just before, you know. They're all sitting at about that two, two and a half meter mark. And that lucky craft that I'm using now, the Baby Shad 60, gets down there perfectly. So I think mean, that's why I'm catching them. And you know, if I was to maybe, to, as I said, use something else, something a bit shallower or a plastic that's snagging up, or, or you know, it just might not be as effective. Uh, like today, anyway. Slamming this lucky craft today. Another nice fish on the paws. I was actually doing something else then and I felt my line just jer jerk and set the hooks on it. But look at that. Straight down the hatch again, another one. They're loving it. Another perch here and a lucky. They're smashing it now. Little one, this guy. Really should use the net more. Oh, he's fat. Look at that. He's small fish, but super fat, super chunky.
and they're hitting it hard today. They're hitting it real hard. We're only another small fish. That's another rat, this one. Man, they hit it hard. What's that? This is a boost, this one just landed in then. And look how he's eating the lure. It's, the bib's got wedged up there. That treble's not even in the in him. And that one must be in him somehow. It's, it's a big girl. What does it go? The tail's a bit cooked. The 52, big fish. Fifty-two centimeters of EP on the bevy shad sixty FC. Big fish. Smash it on his paws again. I literally missed one the cast before. Felt like a decent fish, but they, they just hit hard, even these small fish like this. They're hitting real hard today. And it's only today's only just getting started too, so you wanted that lucky craft. Look at that. Another healthy EP. Again, they're not big, but they're good fun. Back. Well, guys, it's been a pretty good morning so far, and um, that wind's picking up again. It always seems to follow me, the wind, so I thought I'd just run through what I've been doing today and what the plan was. Um, there's a few fish coming through on a hummingbird now, but it's all right, I'll, get, I'll catch them after. So, but today, yeah, just coming out this morning and just uh, up the river and decided to throw a few hard bodies into snags. And I've just basically been hopping my way up the river, um, just fishing snag to snag to snag. And, uh, and just working these little Lucky Craft Bevy Shad 60 FC. So these are the deep diving version, uh, big bib on them. They get down to about two, two and a bit meters. And um, today, yeah, I've just been throwing them deep into the snags and just, just twitching it. And the fish seem, I'm in about three meters. The fish seem to be sitting in about that two to two and a half meters of water thereabouts. And um, yeah, this lure has been able to get down to them and stay in that strike zone pretty well. The good thing about fishing hard bodies like this, especially with something with a big bib like this that dives down deep, um, that if you are fishing heavy heavy structure and timber like I have been, they, these lures dive down, and if they hit something, you can, you know, because you're working them pretty finesse. So you're basically just cranking them down a couple of hand, a couple of winds down to get it down to that depth, and then you're just sitting there and just twitching that rod tip, um, and that lure is just sort of twitching and pausing, twitching and pausing. And if you do hit something, a bit of timber or a snag. Uh, you'll hit it, you'll feel it, and then you can just stop, stop winding or stop, stop twitching, and it'll so slowly float back above, uh, you know, that bit of timber that it's hit, and then you can work it back down again. And um, generally, on the you know, when you do hit that timber, and then you pause it, you get clunked a lot of the time because those, that's where those fish are. They're sitting in that timber. Some of that footage back there on the sander, I finished fishing a snag, and uh, I just went in to have a look because there's a few lizards sitting on there, and as we went over, there's about 20 or 30 perch sitting in there still, and. Um, yeah, that's the, the, the snag fishing I've probably brought about six or eight from. So <clears throat> I'll get back there a bit later on, give them a bit of a break. But it's good to see that if I was fishing a plastic in there, you, you couldn't do it. You're just getting snagged up every second cast and, and busting off gear and losing gear. So the hard bodies today have been really good. Um, and yeah, let's uh, catch a few more. It's only early. It's only, what is it, quarter past 11. So I've probably pulled 15, 20 fish already today. And, and um, yeah, the day's young. Let's get into it.
So what's happening at the moment, the wind is a bit of a pain in the ass today. It's blowing one way and then the tide's pushing out the other way. So I'm basically just coming up to these snags like that behind me there and just spot locking, you know, 10, 15 meters off them and just casting hard bodies and working it pretty thoroughly either side of the snag, out from the snag. And a lot of the fish are actually hitting the lures, not right up in it, but like, they must be following it out or something and then hitting it about halfway back to the boat. So, but yeah, using that Minn Kota to spot lock, um, what we're doing now is it's, it's just makes life so much easier, especially when you're fishing in the wind and it is pretty bad today. So we've got a little bit of swell white capping down the river at the moment. So yeah, without that spot lock, it would make things a lot difficult. Oh, it's another one on a lucky. Coming in thick and fast today. It's been pretty good. EP. This is a big EP. <laughs> he's big. He's he's big. Still haven't got a pair of pliers. I thought I would have learnt by now. Lucky craft doing the damage again. Just another little rat EP. Looks like he's been hit by something there. Still good fun though. I was about to move, I've just felt that clunk. And um oh, that's awesome. It's not a big again, not a big fish. But the way it hit, that's pretty cool. He's short and stocky this one. Call this one Joel.
so good. Oh, we'll get him out of the net. We'll have a look. A lucky craft, baby shot, 60. That's a good way to finish off the day. Chunky little EP on the Lucky Craft. That wind's getting up now. It's um... Well, that's it. Let's call it a day. <sighs> what a day. What a day. We've caught plenty of fish. Had a great time. Listen to Miley Cyrus. You can't beat it. Well, that's a wrap for the day. Um, yeah, it's a pretty good day. We caught plenty of fish. Had to work for them and we battled the elements of uh, that Mother Nature threw at us, as in the wind. Um, but yeah, we got there. The, uh, the spot lock today paid for itself. Um, without that, it would have been a very difficult, especially, especially fishing up river like on those snags and just holding in position. Um, as the wind was just barreling down straight down the middle of the river so um, yeah that, that was good to have that today and um, yeah it didn't really move or yore off um, yeah without it would have been yeah it would have been a struggle today so but yeah just a quick rundown um, as you see most of the fish today were all caught on uh, Lucky Craft Baby Shad 60s um, I pretty much used that one outfit the whole day um, I caught every single fish actually today on them except one um, which was on a plastic, but all the others, yeah, majority of them. Oh, there's a heap of fish coming through on the sander now. Um, yeah, no, plenty, plenty of fish, yeah, they're all, all on the hard body. And um, just, just throwing them into that cover, into the snags, and just, just working them out nice and slow, plenty of pauses, and just four-wheel driving it out of the snags, basically. Just hitting the timber, letting it float up. Hit the timber, let it float up, and um, yeah, they were just getting clunked. Yeah, so I hope you, uh, hope you liked the video and, and learn a couple of things. Um, anyway, until next time, peace! That's a wrap today. Um, pretty good one. Caught plenty of fish. Um, even though we battled the uh, conditions of Mother Nature in that wind, but um, yeah, it's pretty relentless today up the river. It was just blowing straight down the middle, and um, yeah, it was good. Lucky I had the Minkota, the spot lock um, there to be able to just hold me in position because without it today would have been very difficult, especially throwing hard bodies and like plenty of pauses and and um you know letting it sit there for a while like you don't want to be getting blown off the area or blown into the area so i was able to sit on the snags and work them thoroughly and um yeah managed to you know bend a few rods so it was good just out of curiosity we said this morning um about the onboard charger i got and i'm expecting to have used a little bit of battery today just because of the wind and um you know being on it flat out um, but yeah, there you go. 90%, so we've used 3%, I think it was 93 this morning, I think. So we've used 3% battery today, and that's from, that's a good eight or nine, 10 hours on the water. So, and that's been on the electric a lot. So it just goes to show how, um, how good that onboard charger is. It really pumps the charge in there. And realistically, I'll, I'll never have to charge that battery at home. So if, if I can just keep doing that and, allow the uh the charge when i'm on the main motor moving spots or you know heading back to the boat ramp to uh yeah to have used three percent is pretty amazing so 
Yeah, just a thought, yeah, a bit of a, a bit of information there for you guys out there that are thinking about batteries and charges and all that sort of thing. Definitely have a look at those BLA onboard chargers. It won't go wrong. And you'll never ever run out of battery too, so. But anyway, it's time to hit the road now. I'm just uh, pulling out of the boat ramp. I'm gonna hit the main road. So I've got about a five hour drive home and, and um, yeah, go from there, guys. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed and, and maybe learn a thing or two. Cheers.